Grandfather, I have come. I am following in your footsteps, following the road of bones. I am here to find out what happened to you after the Great War. Our grandmothers tell us we were like beautiful beads, falling from a necklace. And then we were scattered, our nation lost in the sand seas of the Kalahari. Tate Vetovanene. I am the granddaughter of Otto Schimming. I am the daughter of Nora Schimming. I'm here today with my uncle, the brother to my mother. I am about to embark on a journey. A journey to find out about you. What happened to you when you were in exile? When you left your home? How did you live? How was your family? Where did you die? And how did they bring you back here? But we know that the story does not start here. It started in the Waterberg, the mystical Waterberg. Land belonging to Samuel Maharero and his people. The Herero were forced to flee the country they loved and leave behind everything they owned. Surrounded and pursued by the German army, the only way out was to the east, into the waterless sands of the Kalahari Desert. A scene unfolded like no other, that of an entire Herero nation in flight.
Kiba kumbwa leka ena noru chindo. Obi puyo ba ena bise wambo. Orongui la ba njeka de tuka. Orong banje de wara de toro la uri ujao kiwa ojibi. O o o obi puka lo kuti mi bi yo nyama. Abi zibi lembo po po hamakari. No buka enda munda mo yoru chindo jima buka enda. Omba tovito. Omba kendo onjahe. On va couper, on va bombarder les gens qui sont en train de se faire. Et moi, je suis en train de se faire. 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 Je suis en train de Chiel Yemari, Kok Tamba, Mungurangi, Ayon Masala Mouino, Noine, Mela Aranje, Komo Kova Herero, Kokusha Oa Herondo, Mumandu, Bazen Pomason, Date Wanjo, Wando Ishi, Bakondo Yuru, Bakondo Make, Dino de Mela Aranje, Kokusha, Omo Kombui, Gautu Buke, Gawien de Mamaheke, Apening Matosha Rinao. Oba kandu no ana she VDP de un pedo en tiempo comando de Uruguay o ocupamos un dinondi mau ya ante qua de un pedo en tiempo me pon me va de tu buque moguti capela en tiempo qua Uruguay como algo va generó VDP ya te tuvimos vamos muramba pata Guru karu guru kahia na wih home buat dondero, buat dom bungri amu rising atau guha mau dondero mandongo. Barai rawa hehe rokusha. Om dahu he kunci bayi he na ina ciri ciri meire biahia rudo. Muka anda sendiri meh kosong anas kami kori kongga ya kada oro. Kanjo beni pak ongga ma eu baru muka, kumabi mulutu kumabi. Oyo he arwin na biawi nene. Biar begini, siwa anda ni de, untuk kuhiba ta, mahu hima de papai dan aku jahat. Jadi kan tu hima tu, kunom pura poka kunam pura. Naija kalau nak papai, naija mahu papai, mutu jadi kan tu hima aku kampur. Oru pati rubah ro, ramun dambi kuno, onyose, orun. Tapi onyose ada hebat, hebat juga. Onda ni nak apa? Kau yang dira ini ni uri. Tapi show jah, nampun lagi, mai piti kau muka, orun dua ribu ru pati rubah. Jauh saya jadi murpa di bawah. Oh ya, ini kan dah, ini mei kodi. Abet tahu rukun dah kumuk. Senti mei kau cakap nasi kopi kopi kongga kada orang. Mei kau yori, nusi ampa mohon buat bin dimba. Opo baser orang buku sama mohon dekuran ada orang ini noina. Orang nasi kopi gundi, orang nasi kopi titi, orang kau bentuk bahan dan ada makan kopi se. Nusi ampa sih baser orang buat nasi mei tu mohon buat. Fontrat orang mungkin ampin tu munde munde pe. Kau tak ke kau di Islanda. Kau hendak muka sahre, osia ambanu patung orang nunduba hion denja meuru si nene, pas apa perorat yo, orat yo yang jahre hanya jahre hinggil dia kuno van dube. Nampak nampak ambanu kau bicara hanjuah duko, kapesi na bicara, oga herawa duko kapesi na pulau kunai, nampak nampak tu buka, pasi aku sih muda muda pemuhi nampin tu kau muti ma, kompan don don donji. Kanga mau he, kau muda sama lama maharero, kamu kau jadi uru. Kau mahu suruh saya masa sahaja dan tidak marga dan di Islanda majulah kita no. Nukang kau mahu nana umur awal hawa kita mahu umur muda pe dua puluh enam tahun majulah kita no. Abi panjang orang punya itu nji, abe panjang leh horor itu nji, abe panjang orang jumpa itu nji. Putra ini orang jumpa dah ada hangu orang nubeh ya sukara. Nampak ada kau dokun orang jumpa uli, dokun orang meja bumbang orang itu bumbeh na ujian bawa mahir ini tiada mau orang mana. Ada panjang itu korek tundi, ada panjang itu korek tundi, ada panjang itu korek tundi tundi di lokam mukfenga, ada panjang itu korek tundo, ada panjang orang maru o, ada imbia iwa mau makuti, mau rujuk ayah kan mau orang jatuh, ayah kau kira mau orang jatuh, ayah kau huru bandu, ayah kau depan jisoh bandu. Papanja romadu kwe tu, papanja romadu do tu, papanja romga mburiro. Auto kudepa, auto kushera, ete kusa nengui, 
tukare no shivara shitu na shoshi nei okutao dombu chwar yanga mona mwa pehe mwi chimo haku foshi totona i muru muru gondwandi muno matupa bandu o mengi na bingu hina mo bara tujibalu bolombo bini baku imbamba hupa omukanda ene no kuitiso kana cheke hiyo mutimbo Omurume ndango anyama mayinga komukandu Omukandu aine lokupa ku the poka na je Ubinabi endani mbiye kwa ko chimwe chimwe Kuma chiwanje nimari oyipoka kuti amba me chitivi nei Ba mukuru anyama chiwanje memo esepi nei Me chitivi Amidst the atrocities committed after the Battle of the Waterberg, our oral history tells us that not all the German soldiers were bad. Some even helped us. Omitiyo mingi mo maheva nduku walekero. Nashi wa mbatu shuwa, nashi wa mbutu hina kushu. Obi, odontara, todon. Ninji. Imea doyon. Ndiya kuswa komu. Tea de pandeko. Adide kuwa tfara. Abe tfaro mura mbango. Shiba tfaro mura mbango. Eh, paka diri la koku kia mui, he mui, no lompoa vile kantantu. Ami meiko kia wan, ingu wako isu ko, ko vipanka za, paka ndambo nambia vika ngaro mayo. Te ungu wakati la po, pongo tu ya, ya nyai nyai. Awewele ere samuera ujanga vesuwe, samuera shira yi, o abe soa pa vetire mu. Mwere hanji wa shira uyo wa nduishi vili mwengi la mawe vetira. Imbamba shi abe soa vili ongo pe. Abe tiri mpa tiri atate umwe mpa. Mbwe thamu ila hajiwa wakaenda wae wae. Mburi loya mubali yomaru yomaru wainyo siwa imbia hiwa amwe kuiti zolo mburi loya we. Au haka no ponda puma ugo genda munda mwa we uli yomuhogomo na mwa kururu gamba gadi no ya upanjaro wini wambu kaenda. Aye wandu hivi tunyona tuze papa de papa wandu hivi nene. Ade pobi na muno, o wini o ba heri rohe, o wengi ba panjali si amuno, o beta tu wenga pi ba hinga, o beka nda hupu mono wengi ba sawa mi me me kondwandi ya shilingi pande. Mwagojuo ya mojawa na au pura njoma hiyo masondo ronu muno wandu, tuniga inu muno wandu majowe sere noju pemberi mojawa na ba heri ro, a beka pita be gosa ase vika komagaro zomburu na watara wamundanda. Ade pobi nyo ya ba hakauka. Popa nene sini nene urito. Me, ya lo ya haka uka kote ya tete mitu ye kubishu wa mutu emji mitambo nao. Kota teo haka uka kumunu nguwana eto kwe, kwe kubimuna, no kwe kuzuba uri mekuru hungi. Tare tete. Kwa hivyo ndawe tunambamba mbangu di parawetu nyota mbeno masa 
Avekaenda, avekaro vitoto. Mobiro ngo bine viteto hino ko nzu na befe. Na mapingo michete. Ave akire mumuriro. Ave isapwe ya ave akire mumuriro ngando. Ave munupo me ave nu. Avekaenda. Ano kuno ai ro mayo vino ho masereta tu. Ave he kumo chawana na iyo na South Africa bo. Uno ba herero. Bakahanga ukamba panjaro ngaro ya wamba panjaro uherero wamba panjaro ndengu ya ocho wadu. Wezi waka endawe koka o utaku. Von Trota wanted to end a nation that had been around for centuries. But he failed. He failed on every count. He won the battle, but lost the war. He failed to kill the Herero leaders. He failed to exterminate the Herero nation. He failed on moral grounds as the perpetrator of the first genocide of the 20th century. He failed future generations by planting seeds of hatred and mistrust. He failed his own people by preparing them for a future Holocaust yet to come. And he failed because none of us could ever forget what he had done. No matiti matu mraere, gutuwa pewa ngutuna. Kupo ya andamu. Ongutienjo, mai hingiru rushindo rotate, kia rushindo kuendamu. Wahirawejo ya mai hingiru rushindo ndo, ruetu shimaru kaendo kuendamu. Heji nga mai hingirejo. Omuhi mwa uja, kwa hama mba matu hingiru, Oye, tiro yo bajero lo podía ya. Un guti maitura ere no, dino dile. Ti wa curate no bondera lo guti ma de curar ere, si ma de un gire maecha, o origindo rota, origindo rota. Hanjo con guti de tu no va anda de tu, iria pa va ca y tu pa yo va. Hanjo de ni moca tico co guti, o ca beta de guja pa no morir matu sin de tu limo origindo bondera lo guti onda ma de tu homo de. Before the war, there was an estimated 75,000 Herero living in Namibia. By 1907, three years later, the survivors numbered about 20,000. But under the ashes of the war, the fire kept burning. They didn't kill all of us, and they didn't kill all the poets. <laughs> On the 7th of December, 1904, Four months after the Battle of the Waterberg, Maharero arrived in the village of Tsao in Botswana. A week later, the British High Commissioner granted his request to settle in Botswana land, today's Botswana. Here Maharero rested and regrouped. He started to piece together what had happened and where all his people had gone. <laughs> Jambo. 
yari okienda ko kushiroke hira butswana omuhunga warwe yari okienda ko mamuho ko mondo South Africa warwe yari ko utokero ko mbae chamba musi wa ombunga wina njatara mo mahwa no kunda mo dudu mo ko twe hidinondi of the estimated 40,000 herero assembled at the battle of the waterberg british records tell us just 1,175 made it to Botswana. It was no accident that Maharero and his group fled to Botswana. It was close enough to the motherland, but out of the reach of the Germans. So it was a relatively safe place to escape to. And they headed to the royal family in Botswana and to friendships forged many years before the war with the Germans. <laughs> Ochiwa Ogusha ashiwa oye wa nyanyi nyanyi ogusha omuramu wa isepa e ushiwa shinene che che eye namba na shandi no chimbumba che no chimbumba ho che waenda ko chikoro ko chikoro ho chimbumba che nu omuhona ngunda wanda ba be hamba be ya dira abi ya chaka ko muhona ngwi omuhona munyi ngwa cha bi omuhona mukati kwandu mu chimbumba hima chende omuhona enguri ko chikoro ngwi Omuhona engwara mbuka ngwi. Omundu cha 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 bisi cha cha tauri wonga ndonga ndaya itaurirwa. Ai arubita. Ufuku munyikane. Ufuku rambuka munyikera mbunda sana ngwe muhona ngwe muhona nguri ngwi. Now the Herero I mean they came to 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 Botswana with their own uh, chiefs. And um, uh, chief Kama who received them at the time um, did not want to deprive the, the people of their uh, of traditional leadership. According to British records, Maharero led a group of about 200. Accompanying Maharero were some of the best known Herero leaders. With him was his mother, Katare Shamwaha, and his three sons, Friedrich, Johannes, and Alfred Maharero. Wakati kwa mali, Johannes Boyikanda Mupurwa, Justus Wafike Huaka Mederi, Velem Omitiri, Trogot Wakanji, Yakanji Munge, mali kaunde pami, mali kaiyata mbada mandumba, oyedera, mali David kaunyo nywa kambadendi. Once settled in Tsao, Maharero was forced by the British to live as an ordinary person with no special privileges. 
He lived in a simple hut under difficult conditions. The Herero were very poor and had only about 30 cattle between them. Like all other Hereros, Maharero had to surrender his rifle. But not all gave up their weapons so easily. <laughs> Living in a time of great change and political upheaval, Maharero's life was controversial. Living as a refugee in a foreign land, some Herero looked down on him and avoided him. One minute, he was the most influential leader in Namibia, and now he was at rock bottom. Ave muhumbu. Eye, waromu ndungwa asheberuwa no kutumbwa, iyo mbara kama osha tatu, no kuhina njembo, no kuhina ndengu. Some did not consider him their leader. Rumors spread. Rumors that linger even today. Rumor and paranoia were also taking seed on the other side of the border. In Namibia, von Trotha was convinced Maharero was busy regrouping his army, preparing to attack the German colony. They had no idea Maharero and his small band of fugitives were battling for their own survival. In August 1905, exactly one year after the Battle of the Waterberg, the native commissioner in Botswana recorded that the Herero have little means of making a living, and 30 men had already left to work on the diamond mines in South Africa in search of a better life. Maharero knew he could not stay where he was, and he could never return to the horrors of German Southwest Africa. And the British now told him explicitly that if he leaves Botswana, he could never again return. They entered through Tsao. From there, they scattered in within Ngani area. Some went to Sihitwa, some went to Makaku, some remained in Maung, some passed to Nokawutiki. Some are there, they managed to settle. As they watched us trekking across their country, some people of Botswana nicknamed us Matama. It means homeless wanderers, people carrying a heavy load. Today, thriving Herero communities mark the route taken by Maharero more than a hundred years ago, a living legacy of the Herero migrations across southern Africa after the Battle of the Waterberg. As they headed across the Kalahari, groups settled in villages along the way. And today, about 30,000 Herero live in Botswana. They met here in Maharabi. That's when they settled in Mahalab. The town of Mahalape lies on the railroad between South Africa and Botswana. This is where the Herero finally found each other. Maharero had been in Bechuana land for two and a half years. He had made solid friendships with the traditional leadership in Botswana and many Herero were now settled peacefully throughout the land. But Herero are not only found in Mahalaga. They are found all over Botswana. The only thing that you find that is unique and not changing is their culture. Everywhere they are, you will not make a mistake. If it's a Herero man, He's walking there. If you know a Herero, you know this a Herero man. If it's a, a, a Herero woman, of course you will know by the dress.
Mbuka cha mesha ntaki kwa wakwate wa shihere romba. Mbaze mbuka cha shiada romba erapi ndi. Ako ndone makapwa. Nushira tupu. Mesha ntaki katu muniko vinepo kaku. Eto waka ndo wa washi nene yuni. Ntaki kwa mdaru wetu wako uhere. Ntaki kwa wakwate wetu mba aruka. Mba tupuko vita. Adia me hindi. Wako washa wana ndiro. Washa wana ndi. Na weha horre kwa mdaru wa shisha wana. Mesha ntaki kwa wakwate wa nyamba. Kano ndungu wa kusha vipeso kuhore la omudaru. Kwa we munike na. And the Herero, uh, 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 they have a, a culture like the American uh, cowboys. The American cowboys will look after their own uh, cattle, and in fact, they will use the, um, the the rope to catch a cow that is running away. The Herero will hold the cow by the by the tail, and he will make it fall. Mm. I don't know if you can still do it. <laughs> yeah, the, you don't, if, with the Herero, you don't need the, the rims or ropes to tie it up to, to, to make it fall. You just hold it by hand and it will fall. That, is the cult, that was the culture that we copied um, from the, the Hereros. <laughs> No, <laughs> Di hupa mongon, ame simba, ame simba kwatwa, kuri simba uto kwatwa, kwatwa na mongon be, kasi me kuri ya mongon be, kasi ngamba kuri pira mongon be, juan di pira lombura, omirongo ham bombari, lombura ham bom, no longon benda, onduku kanda, wa kaindo wa kanda. During my time in, uh, in Mahalapi, when we go to Northern, they had a, a peculiar smell. You, you could uh, identify them by their <laughs> smell. When they pass, you know, <laughs> the Herero has just gone <laughs> past. <laughs> um, by the, the smell that is, they called it Tao. I don't know this scent, mm. what it is called, but it was there. <laughs> Mehe, <laughs> oh, as we moved across Botswana, we became stronger. We may have lost most of our possessions in the war, but we carried our culture inside of us. We rekindled our holy fires, and the spiritual staircase of our lives once again spiraled around us, our ancestors protecting and guiding us. Ho! Ho! How are you getting off? How can you get 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 off? How can
Munima Matukonjo on Jira Yogisha Munu Vemus Yogisha Mudo Yavimbi. In the early hours of dawn, when the spirits of the dead speak most clearly, Maharero received blessings before his long road ahead into the pale blue hills of the South African Waterberg. This was not the end of the line for Maharero and his men. Things were about to change once again. Mahalape was to become the springboard for a new life in a new country. Agents for the gold mines traveled from South Africa to Botswana to recruit laborers. As pay, they offered cattle to the Herero. The Herero were technically still refugees in Bechuana land, and Maharero saw little option but to accept their offer. It was time to trek again. Imagine it, the South Africans offering Maharero a land of his own and a chance of a new life independent of outside rules and interference. Imagine what he must have thought when he saw this place for the first time. A place virtually empty of other people, with crystal clear waters and located in the remote mountains of northern South Africa. Imagine when he found out that the place he was being offered was called the Waterberg. He must have thought this was divine intervention. After trekking across the Kalahari, a journey of a thousand miles from the Waterberg in Namibia to the Waterberg in South Africa, on horseback and by foot, he must have thought to himself, finally, I am coming home. While in Botswana, a man called Yunt approached Maharero. Yunt was representative of the East Rand Proprietary Mines. In September 1906, he brought Maharero to the Waterberg of South Africa to show him the farm there, to become laborers on the mines. On the 5th of June 1907, the native commissioner in Botswana, Selborne, gave permission for Samuel Maharero and his followers to leave Bechuana land. They would only be allowed back with his permission. Maharero, accompanied by 110 men, 140 women and children, 116 cattle and 30 goats trekked out of Bechuana land and into South Africa, and with this, gave up his influence in the territory. The Anglo-French mining company agreed to rent the farms Groenfontein and Nachwacht in the Waterberg Mountains of South Africa on a 25-year lease solely for Samuel Maharero and his men. They would recognize Samuel as their leader, they could keep their cattle with them, and they would be allowed to leave the farm any time they so wished. Each adult herero must pay one shilling per month for lodging, and every herero over the age of 18 had to work on the mines. Maharero would receive one or two pounds for every laborer he recruited. They were still economically weak and almost totally dependent on the mining company in the Witwatersrand, but they had a foothold in South Africa. For the first time in many, many years, things were looking up for Maharero and his small band of loyal followers. In fact, it brought jubilation to Samuel Maharero and many, and the stream of Palala River. The similarities of the mountains of the waterbed and the waterbed where they're coming from. What I heard also from my mother, that's why that place is called Ondundu Ondana, place of calves. So over Herero cattle, when they arrived there, they got a lot of calves. So it brought happiness in people. And Maharero, he was the leader who then brought them to Waterbeck. They find another home, similar to what they are coming from. So he was so happy. Another pioneer, Ted Davidson from England, had also just arrived in the Waterberg of South Africa. He set up stores in the area and, travelling by ox wagon, traded throughout the Waterberg. He used to live here, had a trading store here. Then he used to load his wagons up and he used to travel down to his Bushveld farm, which used to take about three or four days. Today it takes an hour. He bought the farm 24 Rivers in the Waterberg Mountains and two other farms, 
Toulon and Sunnyside on the edge of the Waterberg. During his ox wagon trips, Ted Davidson traded with the Herero on the farms Nachwacht and Grunfontein. When my grandfather met the Hereros, he obviously became very friendly with them. Their relationship was symbiotic because he traded with them, he took them the goods they needed. They had cattle and sometimes they used to pay with cattle. They must have shared a lot of stories and got to know each other pretty well. He mentions that he went to a funeral of one of their chiefs and describes the funeral. And to do that, I should imagine he must have been very well liked and, and respected. Ted Davidson wrote down stories about his encounters with the Herero more than 100 years ago. Descendants of these original Herero and English pioneers met recently to swap stories and photos from all those years ago. Pioneers of the Waterberg, a book I put together, we had lots of very interesting old photographs and amongst them was the photographs of the Herero people. It was in the heart of the bushveld that Ted came across a small colony of Hereros whose country of origin was Southwest Africa. Clinging together fiercely and determinedly, they refused to mix and intermarry with the northern Sutu speakers, with whom they had come into contact. Blood-curdling tales they told of the journey their people had taken across the Kalahari Desert when they fled from German rule in what had become German West Africa. They arrived actually in South Africa mid-June, July uh, of 1907. Okay. It was somehow a relief for, my, uh, for, 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 for someone in Maharero uh, to, have, to have his dreams to return home, yes. a reality. Ted Deveson, who actually somehow assisted the Ovahero people to build schools, the, the churches, and for us it's a very good revelation. So impressed was Ted with the dignity, cleanliness and superiority of the Herero that he asked one of them, Helena, to come as a nurse girl in his family. Helena was one of the few mothers who had managed to get children, a boy and a girl, across the desert alive. Her younger child, Lydia, she brought with her for a time when she came to our family. This was in 1906, when Ted and Molly had their first daughter, Lois. That's my mother with Lydia and her child, Lucy. And this one is Lydia. And that one is Lydia. Yes. And so Dida was part of my childhood all the way through. And she was like a member of the family. Yes. I can distinctly remember sitting on her lap and I could smell the, the smell of her and the smell of her beads. And I liked her beads. Uh, you know, this is early memories. I used to play with her beads and they had a particular herby sort of, you know, aromatic smell. For me personally, it brought a sense of belonging. It brought a sense of knowing under the leadership of Samuel Maharero. And the interaction between these Ovaherero people with the white people like the grandfather, Ted Deveson. There was that mutual respect. This is a group of, um, of Hereros. I mean, this could have been, easily been Samuel Maharero. I saw him once clad in the smartest of European clothes, brought him from his people on, in the mines, and having about him an air of stately gloom that is characteristic of the Herrera race. When I recorded Pioneers of the Waterberg, mm. I was referring collectively to my family, mm -hmm. to the Hereros, okay. to anybody who, who settled here mm. in, in those early days, because those are the pioneers, aren't they? I think that this must be one of the most significant gifts yeah. of, of this book. I think it does. Mm. That's 
The gold mines of the Vidvatasrand needed the Herero workers, and the Herero needed land and a place to call their own. The contract with the mining company meant that Samuel would provide labor to the mines so that he and his followers could one day own the Grunfontein and Nachwacht farms. The mines actually, they wanted uh, labor force, people to come and work at the mines. So uh, Samuel also saw it as an opportunity to own a piece of land who, which then will remind him about his own country. Fortunately enough, he was able to provide labor to Johannesburg mines. It's where the people would then went to work. Unfortunately, the majority of men who went there, they left their loved ones back in Grunfontein and Nachwacht. So it was very difficult Maharero to look after these people. Samuel Maharero followed his people to Johannesburg to go and look, why are these people not coming back home? But if you check the distance, we are talking about 400 kilometers. In 1908, Samuel Maharero traveled to the City of Gold, looking for his young men who had been swallowed up by the swinging nightlife of Sophia Town and Soweto. He also met with government officials, lobbying for the two things he wished for most in his life to unite his people and to return to his motherland. But his year in Johannesburg brought him nothing but disappointment. And when he returned to the Waterberg, he found most of his followers had left in his absence. The dream of one day owning a piece of land was beginning to slip away from his grasp. When Samuel Maharero came back to Kunfontein, he found that half of our people, let's say half of the women, some elder men, already moved. That part of the history is that uh, Samuel Maharero then was not a good man, yes. Were, people, they saw him as a, not really as a sellout, but as a person who didn't kept his promise. That the, there are men who went to the mind they will one day come back. Conditions in South Africa were no longer what Maharero expected. Many of his men had gone missing, and he realized that the mines were only interested in him as a supplier of cheap labor. In 1911, the mining company wrote, the Herero have failed to show adaptability to conditions of mine work and are not interested in working on the mines. The lease on Grunfontein Farm is to be canceled and the Herero employment project on the mines abandoned. Things got worse with the passing of the Native Land Act of 1913, the first major piece of apartheid legislation passed in South Africa. No African could own land, and no more than five families could live on any one farm. The Hereros were forced to split up, and one by one, they moved out of the Waterberg. 1913, the Formidable Land Act came in place, which uh, brought Maharero's dreams to down. Because the uh, 1913 Land Act meant for Samuel Maharero that he would not own land. So his dreams that he will once own land in, in foreign land then become diminished. Devastated Maharero said, so that Maharero then went back to his own culture of drinking, uh, marrying another woman and other women, and so and so. So that land act actually devastated the whole Hereros who came through as refugees in South Africa. A year later, and it was the outbreak of the First World War, young Herero men enlisted to fight against their arch enemy, the Germans in Namibia. It was a way to return home, and a handful left by boat and made it back to their motherland. Samuel also saw this as an ideal opportunity and petitioned to return to Namibia. But the South African government were afraid of the emotional impact his presence would have in the country, that his return might ignite rebellion, and so they refused his request. As conditions became too desperate, one family after another left back to Bechuanaland or to work on other farms outside of the Waterberg. 
By 1917, the Herero cattle herds had dispersed. And there were now only 20 men, 24 women, and 11 children living with Samuel. The former great leader was now employed as a common milk boy. By 1919, loneliness in a foreign land and his longing for his own country was too much to bear. Maharero wrote to the resident commissioner in South Africa. Chief, I am very much grieved because I am practically alone where I live. I would like to be resettled in Botswana. But if the government could allow me to return to my own country, I would like that much better still. But once again, the British government refused his request. Samuel decided it was time to return home. And at that time, Kama was also sick. Samuel Mahara gathered his men and he told them his decision to go back to Botswana. For the former chief, the wheel had turned full circle. He had finally given up his life of drink and pleasure. After 19 years in exile, his epic journey across southern Africa was almost at an end. With a handful of followers, the 68-year-old Samuel took to the road one last time and walked out of the Waterberg and back into the Kalahari, back to his old friend, Chief Kama III. Now, in the twilight of his life, he was for the first time openly praised by the government. Samuel was unusually dignified and imposing in his demeanor as chief. On the 7th of December, 1922, an ailing Samuel returned to Botswana. Three months later, his good friend, Chief Kama III, died in Serowe. Three weeks later, Samuel died and was buried next to his friend. Chief Samuel Maharero died this morning. He has been suffering from malignant disease of the stomach, the immediate cause of death being exhaustion and heart failure. He had many other complications, but the main cause of death was the malignant growth. Dr. A. Worrell, Serowe, 14 March, 1923. Ombara, yakati la moko tuwa thiru ya ngoma, kehira kame ongobe ya chitu mwanganga, njali na mwoko wa muamba liko ongobo lombambi. No, ame shiba koka, umatupo wanje tole, tuwale koka hanja, kejipake ya menea tatu mkwate maharero, Samuel lay in a foreign grave for five months. Then, in early August 1923, the news spread like a wildfire. Samuel was to come home by rail to Okahanja. Questions and rumors would finally be answered. Was he dead? Has he secretly escaped? Is he really coming home? <laughs> Osiya, his legacy, as I said, is the Revlek was revived among the Herero people to be an association where they come together. His burial and his commemoration is one of a big legacy of him. The pride within the Herero people came after his death. And it is not alone for the people of Namibia, but or even the Hereros in Botswana, how to to regard themselves as strong as a strong nation among the Tswanas and the English people of that time. So they hold, they preserved their culture, their religion, 
the way they dress. All this shows to you that he, he, he left a legacy of be a leader of a strong nation. I think I know that there is no country in this world, yeah, which is an island. Hukumune Mburukamu. On the other it is everyone's quest to find out who they really are. But the only way to find out who we really are is to know about what happened in the past. I have undertaken the journey I promised to, and I now know about your story. I know that you came back, and I know that you sacrificed your life and more for our people that enabled us to move on and to create the life that we live today. I will pass your story to the young ones that still do not know. I will make sure that they know. Okay. Who's gonna remember, remember the forgotten heroes, heroes, yeah. Somebody tell me now if it's not you and me. Mamokopo. 